option. But IG are going back to something that their bot lane knows quite well, bringing out the Ash, something that can be aggressive in the 2v2, give them some of that pride to play around with the volleys. And that could be what they need to set Luyen up for success. The Hawk shots, all that utility, yeah. the long distance engage, it is already leaning well for an adaptation of style for IG. But there are some things that are gonna slip through the cracks and there are some big monsters out there. Callista locked in for light. Something that you usually wouldn't want to pick up against the Ash uh, because of the slows that she does provide, but Weibo clearly saying they do not care, and they want to be able to look to match the aggression in the 2v2 this time. Highlighted the Talia. That's a pick I would really like and love to see Xiaohu on. It was really when Weibo started leaning on the Talia that you started to see in game on Rift, whether their perform you know their, their uh, results were still hit or miss, but their performance was definitely enabled once Talia came strong to the meta. And it is bread and butter exactly the thing that fits Xiaohu's playstyle, right? He looks to map play. He did it last game on the LeBlanc, he did it on Tristana. Now with this complete synergistic champion, you will have a lot to say in how the map is run. On going back to comfort, going back to the Draven, say, I can make this work. And now for IG again with Lillian on the rip. I feel like it's always a little bit distorted. Where do they go? And actually, gonna look for an early pick top lane. Rek'Sai, with his bugs being fixed, we've seen really coming strong uh, into the LPL in yesterday's series. Again, very strong yeah. early. Uh, a lot of sustain with that passive. So I like it. Why is Cam was playing it too, right? Yeah, yeah. He he has been putting on some games in it in solo queue. So we'll see if he can adapt well to Renata. Of course, something we knew would come out for Weibo once the Callisto is picked up. But Weibo's probably doesn't have to be scared, Bazel, because like you said, long range engage, level six, Wink sets it up, unable to run them down with the Draven. That yeah. could be how IG's bot lane comes alive. The thing is, though, I, I will just give a caveat. Crisp is probably one of the most lethal Renatas I've ever oh, seen. he's the guy. And uh, whenever Renata first came in and the, the flash ulti combo was a thing, Crisp was the one innovating that, I feel like, for our league. And it was incredible to watch. So now they're going to have a power duo of their own. Yeah, Chris was the first guy to really bring out the Renata and show its strengths. I love that throwback. Uh, so they're going to be on something that they can find a lot of value on. I like the ban out of the Zinjiao, taking away some of these junglers. You know, the uh, the ult can just be such a hassle for the Draven and Ash to deal with. And it's going to be a new look for Weibo, right? Because they're actually leaning into wanting to punch IG in the face, just as <laughs> IG, uh, just as much as IG want to punch them. See if IG can bring them down to their level. I'll punch them right back. The Karma is a really big ban out here. I feel like facilitating a lot of the supportive nature that uh, IG are going to be looking for in the second half here. But the uh, Zin Zhao, very primary target towards Shao, taking away some of the skirmishing potential that he's going to want to have with this composition. I wonder if Weibo just look to answer top here. I was going to say Udir being the big one that stands out. He is able to get that push up against the Rek'Sai and fulfill a similar role, maybe just a little bit better with being able to maintain that early prio. So now Weibo going to be left with some options. Things like the Aatrox and Cassante still available might set YS game up for success. They go for either of these. Wonder a, a little bit of a lack of presence on Aatrox today. It is going to be here for the third game, and it's ZDZ piloting that one. Yeah, so going to have his opportunities. I think Rex should be stronger early and be able to take a lot of those uh, winning trades. So now we're just going to need jungle in mid for IG. And this is where I think Kryon can really be struggling to find something to link up with. You there we go. To, right? Well, like, yeah, you have to. Yeah, I mean, you're bringing him in for a reason, right? If you're bringing Lil Yen on the Rift, you know he's going to be bringing out the Nidalee. They're going to have the Tristana there, so you're really relying on Enchanted Crystal Arrow knockups to set up for Lil Yen. But like I said, Lil Yen doesn't really care about set up for the Nidalee. He yeah. will just have to try and hit his own spears. And now the, the Poppy Hover, I think, would go really well at trying to prevent uh, things like the Tristana or Rek'Sai getting value. I guess not a lot you can do up against that bot lane, but even just yeeting one of the members of IG yeah. out of the fight, like, that could do a lot at, uh, you know, just taking down their damage profile. Especially Loyan as well. I think a big thing I always focus on, we do have a lot of Nidalees around, but I feel Loyan is the Nidalee. He's had over 50 games played. He has an over 60% win rate on the champion itself. You, got, you bring this guy in to 
press into the face of the opposing jungler. That's not something that Xiao Hao has had to deal with at all this series yet, and we'll see what his answer is. I mean, hell, he actually played this exact jungle matchup a week ago, though, so at least, again, having the recent experience to be able to lean into. If they haven't done it today, they are used to it. Standoffs could be annoying, though, having to deal with those Nidalee Spears and not having a, a very easy way of being able to force fights outside of, I guess, just Chris running forward, using the LD Callista, bringing him out. So this one looking a little bit more possible for IG in my mind. Again, leaning on things like the Draven. Mazel, we got to see on and Wink take over. The story of the tortoise and the hare. We find ourselves on the precipice of the end. The tortoise being Weibo, the hare being Invictus. Invictus gaming a team that has consistently found early leads. They play through their 2v2. They find advantages early. Weibo a team that's slow to start, but fast to finish. And they find a lot of strength in mid to late game. This is a do or die game for IG. The first time they've been in playoffs for over a thousand days. That in and of itself is an award, but they would love to keep this series going. They'd love to make Weibo sweat. So let's hear those Jios for game number three. Love to hear the crowd alive and love to see IG going for a level one. They will be spotted out here by Xiaohu though. Spear going wide, the volley hits. They might want to chase this down. Crisp, a decent poke back and IG able to make a little bit stick early. Oh, Xiaohu gonna sneak behind I enemy like lines. So jungle camps potentially just gonna end up being traded with IG getting this control. And I do gotta say that to look at this, uh, this game holistically, in terms of drafts, I think this is IG's best setup. Uh, and a lot of that coming from the Weibo side of the longer this goes, right, you're going to get outranged by things like the Tristana, uh, the Nidalee Spears, the Ash Volley is going to prevent you from being able to run forward. The thing is, can they get through the early game? Can Weibo just be the better team and, and the draft this time around won't matter? Uh, also throws into question just Weibo's red side prep as well, right? Maybe it's not Lo Yen coming in or, or Weibo getting overconfident, maybe. A lot of their, their good drafts just being set up for the blue side. They did still have a uh, pick available uh, for them. Don't know exactly how that worked out for this third game, but IG find themselves on the blue side for the first time. A little bit of that level two advantage being gained as Ash does help provide a lot of that staying pressure onto the Callista early. And let's remember that IG still don't know uh, what's up with Xiao Hao. <laughs> Still, having pressure in bot lane, finally, having a jungler around is going to set up on and wink well. I'm curious to see gonna if junglers... This going to be so awkward. I'm curious if junglers end up interacting at all. Like, if we if we actually get Xiao Hao committing to a ganker on bot, or if they have to be too fearful of this Nidalee. The funniest part is going to be who finds out first, because then the other person's going to be even more surprised. Oh, this could be timing. <laughs> this could be timing. All right, he's going to come around the corner. Sees Xiao Hao there. Fight has ensued. Electrocute going to kick off. Lien is he's powerful dead. here. He's going to look for it oh. as well, but the flash gets him out. Steadfast presence. That speed giving him an easy way out. Now, Lien gets a speed up when he goes through the bushes here as the Nidalee. The Blast Cone is going to get Xiao Hao to safety, and he gets out like a bandit. He literally, they just traded sides of the jungle, and now they're going to go back top. It's, it's tragic for Lien that none of his spears connecting so far not the ones level one on Xiaohu not any of these on Xiao Hao but I always just forget how uh insane phase rush is with that movement speed that Xiao Hao got even gonna be able to get away with this camp at the end but it is gonna leave Lien open to the red buff and also top lane is going as we'd expect why able to maintain oh. that pressure Xiao Hao's playing mind games with Cry in here. He does have the rocket jump to get out, but he can't do it in the worst ground. Oh. And now he's in trouble. He's going to flash. Xiao Hao wants it. He can't get over. Xiao Hu's going to get him. Does Xiao There's Hu no have mana. the difference? There's one more rock left in the trigger. Is he going to pull it? Cry and makes it out alive. And he has to TP in the end with Wink showing Xiao Hao. Oh. He might end up going down. Okay. So does have that to be able to dash away, but a lot committed by Weibo. Mid lane Xiao Hu losing both summoners. But again, IG finding a different way to make something happen. Honestly, the most proactive early game we've seen from them so far in this best of five. I mean, the most, 
I, I, actually, I'd probably say it's the most proactive early game from Weibo. I, IG might be forcing them into this, right, with Lu Yan cutting into the jungle. But the proactivity not really Ooh. working out. Sad wasn't able to connect with Crying flashing away, but not <laughs> having the ability to finish him off is probably killing Xiao Hu on the inside, who, once he spots the Ash, has to TP away. Uh, feeling threatened that he might go down if Wink decides to just path back down towards him. Xiao will have vision on Lien. Actually doesn't get the wall bang there. Does have Xiao Hu on his way down with Kryon joining. A 2v2 could ensue, but we have objectives coming up on the map. We gotta look at lane states right now. Light and Chris gonna crash a big one towards bot side. Xiao Hao gonna stay around doing his gromp as well. But you gotta wonder how quickly these teams want to transition towards these neutrals. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I think Weibo should feel fine. Uh, not feeling pressure to go for anything as of just yet. Give time for things like the Weaver's Wall, especially to be able to become a factor in this game. I think seeing what Lil Yen can pull off is going to be more interesting, right? Especially when, like we said, your CC is somewhat conditional. Enchanted Crystal Arrow, YSKM knocking someone up to set up for an easy spear. That's about it. We also want to take a look at lane states a little bit there as well. We have seen some very big differences being gained in the first two series games, but uh, this one, a lot more even states across the board and even a little bit of a lead for Lian. We'll see if they can turn that into anything here as those objectives are on the map. Both junglers up towards top side, up towards these telegrubbies. Yeah, there shouldn't be much of an opportunity for Weibo to look for that. So we can already see Xiao who actually setting up some vision around bot side. So Weibo looks like they're going to consciously give this one up. This is, ooh, Kryon. Oh, I was coming around the corner here. Yeah, Kryon was going for the engage on Xiao who. They also have presence on bot side with the push into the turret there by Crisp and Light. Xiao Hao's looking for something down there while the Telegrubbies are being watched like Saturday morning cartoons for Lien. Here they come. They're going to try to go to on, and they do find him. Chris tanking up here. The bailout's going to be available, but they don't even need it. First blood to Weipo. And look, Xiao who's even leaning down on the map. He has Weaver's Wall now, so if on ever showed, that could have been another kill going over. They are going to back out for now, so we get a trade of two grubs for one kill. Weibo striking where they know was a weak point last game. They consistently hovered bot side. They consistently found advantages there, and they strike first in bot side yet again. On and Wink, they got to find advantages. This Draven with the double marksman composition needs to be one with early gold. It feels like a lot's going to have to come online once they've enchanted Crystal Arrow uh, to be able to enable on to try and find an opportunity. But they don't have much of a way, but they got enough heavy trades to make this happen. You have to turn a bunch of wings. Yeah, nice juggle coming out from Chris. A little hop, skip, and a jump out of there by Light as well. Good combinations early. It also led to two Grubbies being taken by Lian. Not all three, actually. So maybe a little bit of focus up there later on. But right now, they are positioning for Weibo around the Dragon Pit and around their bot lane. Now having serrated Dirk. On the Callista, ooh, again. Oh no, you might be a predator, but there's two hunters waiting in the bush. On and Wink coming around the corner, though. Crisp in some trouble. He's gonna flash. They now have damage from Light stacking up with the Ren stacks. Lien is scared to go in. You can see the hesitancy, but if he can hit the hook, he goes in. Or at least with the spear, they do end up finding a decent amount of damage onto Crisp. But Lien can't do it. Flash forward from Wink. He's going to get hamstrung oh, into the wall. Xiao Hao goes down and gives a shut over to On. Now the bailout gets crisp, but that's two kills to On. And now Lien trying to get light. He'll slice his way to another one. And IG have a lead for the first time in this entire series. Cry and cutting off Xiao, who is well preventing the Weaver's Wall from being able to come out and find a solo kill. So this time around, IG able to find success in two of their lanes. A massive swing of gold now with 3k in favor of ig very very different style coming out a lot more aggressive a lot more in your face and lien even though he takes it on the face here at first they actually turn this completely around and right i feel like that's the difference this game is we're actually seeing weibo play a lot more aggressive with how they drafted and it, it, it's turning around to bite them leaving 
light here, isolated, just take all of these free autos out yeah. from Wink. The spear connects, and then it just gives IG even more leeway. Weibo were banking on the Talia coming, but right here on the minimap, you can see Tristana Ooh. halting him from coming, and uh, just great by IG to be able to finish this one off. Now we have to see them be able to bring this gold lead forward, start taking neutral, start getting plates, and really cement themselves to bring us to a game forward. Ooh, we're getting a combo in mid lane. Xiaohu goes into it, but Xiaohu doesn't have much damage just yet. He's gonna pop that Keeper's Verdict, but gets the increased, or at least decreased cooldown for it. No other objectives are gonna fall during it, but we're getting a lot of scuffles in. In the draft, I had talked about kind of uh, IG maybe wanting to bring Weibo down to their fighting level, and Weibo bought into that. They went with the early game scuffling comp, and it hasn't paid up for them just yet. The Enchanted Crystal there, we're coming down bot side. Might pay up for IG's bottom lane as Fate's Call does end up getting used. Crispin to be able to get away safely. It does end up being an ult for ult. And with Xiao Hao being around this side of the map, nothing more going to be able to come from this. But it seems hard for Weibo to be able to find anywhere they can attack. Krine's doing a great job of just keeping uh, momentum and pressure in mid to not allow Xiao Hu to be able to roam with the Weaver's Wall. Anytime he does see him hover down, he's following. It's leading them to have success in this bot lane 3v3. They're winning the top lane 1v1. Like, game plan just going so well yeah. for IG right now. So we see Krine, again, doing exactly what I just said, matching Xiao Hu, making sure that he can't find any of those opportunities to find numbers and create picks. That pick is so big in a solo, but now Crying actually get caught his own. He's got a flash towards his team. Shaha doesn't and does end up taking him out. I thought he didn't have the angle for it. Lien unable to save his teammate has to flash out actually as Shahu wanted to take him out. But even then, like look how hard that had to be for Weibo to find that kill. You don't you don't really have any great ways of locking someone down as Weibo. You you need to be able to to hit that that seismic shove or them just be next to a wall for Xiao Hao to set up. So I don't think these opportunities are going to happen all too often, but it's good that Weibo found one to capitalize on. I'll actually take a look back at the replay here and see the transgressions that Kryon had done. <laughs> doesn't, just doesn't even connect the seismic ship to start oh, off with. No. Just ends up getting baited. Uh, so he walks into Xiao Hao getting that CC up. And even then, it was almost not enough. But Xiao Hao going to be the one to get that. Look at this pressure IG are using on bot side. They've already taken multiple plates there as well. They still have some time to take more. We get a third for on and wink in the bot side. And this is more like it for a Draven lane and for IG's bot side. Yeah, being able to lean on the pressure they found with the Ash and just again having having a strong 3v3 uh, punishing a lot of Weibo's aggression. And IG so far seems to say, hey, we don't even care about topside. We don't care about those grubs up there. We're just going to keep hammering down on the spot lane 2v2 and not let Light and Chris play the game. Lian trying to take that uh, ward out. Weibo are starting to collapse down here as Lian was staying a little long. They will end up getting their back off for On and Wink. On's going to be very happy about that. I'm sure he's going to be able to buy himself tons of goodies. He goes back. As he does, Essence Reaver is acquired. Yeah, so IG still going to be playing through the strengths of this 2v2. We have seen, it seems like, Weibo make an adaptation, though, of we're starting to see Xiao Hao be like, hey, I'm not going to hover around bot and try to 3v3 you. When you're doing that, I'm going to hover around mid. I'm going to try to make it so Xiao who has room to move and Crying can't follow. And that's how they're trying to sway those bot lane plays. So we'll see if that can find them any success against this item lead and this gold lead that IG are already starting to find. Are you saying that there's an opportunity? I'm saying, uh, yeah, there is one. You know, right, it, right in Lace Inventory. Oh, no way! Oh my goodness! Thank, thank yeah. you, thank you, Lyric. <laughs> but uh, I, I, that I set you up. Like, I gave it to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you had to. You had to. Uh, as you do see those first item spikes coming across, these two ADCs are going to start ramping in pressure because they are very early game based, it feels like. Obviously, uh, Kalista does have a lot of strength to say when those Ren stacks start stacking up later in the game. But uh, the presence is going to be needed to be used at least through here as a frosty wave brushes across Xiaohu's front door in mid lane. Yeah, now IG finally going to be able to take the rest of those grubs. And it's hard. I think you can tell that Weibo don't really have a great idea of, of where they can attack on the map right now. It's just giving even more space to IG. Hell, we haven't really talked about top lane because it's been a non-factor, but even look at, at YSKM. 
uh, starting to get those tank items under his belt, he's going to be really annoying to deal with, especially when you have the Lethality Callista. Love that Loyen's just taking advantage of being up here already. Start up the Rift Herald. They end up got, getting those uh, three grubs as well. Would be nicely used, but I think that's the difference I want to highlight. Uh, it doesn't feel like there was many, like, incredulously wrong things that Tianjin was doing, but Lien's tempo in this game has definitely given a breath of life to IG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's been able to play around, play around the map well again. I think a lot of it is kind of down to, to how Weibo drafted as well. We can give credit to that for Lien too. Why not? True. You know, Why not? He came in, and, and I mean, hell, Weibo felt the need to draft this way around him. Uh, and he's he's done a great job of, of stepping up, enabling the bot lane, and leaving YS Scam to, to be the sweet side top laner who, who doesn't need a lot of uh, investment. Now it's about how they use this Herald with Dragon coming up. You'd expect it to be soon. It's going to be a, a player gold graph that you uh, screenshot and send to your friends if you're IG. <laughs> It's going to be very nice. Handshake does come through as Weaver's Wall comes across from Shahu. Not going to catch anybody there. Oh, Enchanted Crystal Arrow going to be utilized backwards now as the TP's coming in. Shao needs to get out of there. On does a lot of damage. Fate's Call going to be used here. Oh, that was a really good hostile takeover. But the Rift Herald used in mid lane by IG. They will strut their stuff here. Try to take down an outer turret. And now, Wave will have used everything. They're going to lose this tower. They're going to lose this dragon. And if anyone oversteps, IG are going to feel completely confident looking for an engage. Let's see where they're driving off to now. Maybe off into the sunset here. Or maybe off into a game number four. And drive their way all the way to bot lane, YSKM. You can uh, drive the, the wheel of the Rift Herald anytime. As he's able to take down another turret for IG. That'll be two in a row. Huge swing of gold now. Almost 5k gold lead for IG. Two dragons up. Weibo don't have any fantastic scaling to lean on. Lethality Callista. I mean, it's Talia late game, right? Like, she she has some solid damage. She has some presence, but nowhere near enough to deal with IG. And like I said, you don't even really have the lockdown or the CC to ever be able to isolate someone from IG. So still going to hope to be able to find picks while these turrets are still up. And maybe certain members of IG will be overextended, but... Even that isn't happening. Weibo struggling to find the engine here for themselves, but it's an IG who maybe had taken the mantle of Weibo, but in the series holistically, taking a couple games to really warm up the fact, and honestly, Lien coming in to light the fire. They have found a lot of advantages off the back of Weibo's mistakes and as well as the way they drafted for this game number three. So we'll see if uh, Weibo find that ticket here. They are getting those first item spikes for themselves. They have that Seraph's upgrade there for Xiaohu as well. Oh, Chris needs to be careful having to flash. She had a crystal arrow. Wink with the Ash has been so clutch with getting a lot of the summoner spells out of Weibo so far. IG going to move their pressure up towards top side. Be able to take down an outer turret here. So maybe not. Nice little wave clear from Weibo. Yeah, they're not going to be able to keep this up, though. I love the way they're playing with the middle here. Just kind of using this as the threat to dissuade Weibo from, from ending up saving this turret. And it's like a bit of a theory. What okay, if IG okay. just played those first two games and they're like, April Fools, and then... <laughs> the big reverse sweep happens. Let's ah. go so far the other way. You know, we, we were saying it was, it's a sealed deal for Weibo before, but I want to believe it's a sealed deal for IG. They were giving Lien two games to, like, oh, no. dial in oh, Xiao no. oh, 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 my God! He can't do anything! He is surviving, though, against Xiao Hu. Ends up getting taken out by Chris. Now on finds Xiao Hu himself, and a big amount of gold going to his pockets. On survives as well. It felt like we almost cursed them, but IG just too strong, having too much damage. And again, Weibo not really having a way to, to, to solidify a kill, relying so much on the seismic shrub or, or Xiao Hao being able to find an angle around them. So I love the punish coming out from IG. They pick up a turret top. And uh, why is game on the Rex side? Yeah, you're, you're never going to be able to lock him down, ZDZ. <laughs> Accept it. I, I, this is a bounce house from hell, man. Like, he's trying to flash, he's trying to rocket jump, he's in the step best presence, he's in everything. But in the end, it still didn't matter. I mean, Shao missed, what, only a couple of cues there towards the end, and, and he still almost ended up getting away. Uh, and then, sadly, not having the damage is on, picks up another one. A ton of gold injection now. Two and a half items. Collector. Yeah, he's huge. 
Lecter is very big at pressing the advantage you already have. Now they also have two dragons to boot. They have another one spawning in less than two minutes. And Wink can consistently look for engages. This is much more the style that the IG bot lane has represented and honestly a pillar of IG over the last year. Yeah, I mean, this this is how On and Wink uh, were really being lent on early on in the split. And it really felt like they were the, the players to watch on IG, which which felt weird after after committing to, to this bot lane for so long. You know, of course, having Xiao Yu AG in there as well yeah. as the other AD carried kind of swapping back and forth. I think a lot of people question of like why are IG investing into their bot lane, and both last year and this year, the early starts of the split, you can start to see why before they really begin to taper off. Now delivering here in playoffs once again, staving us from a 3-0 into the first round. Weibo now looking to move their vision out into their red side, which is no longer theirs. IG have consistently been able to find those advantages. But we have about 50 seconds for a dragon. It would be a third for IG. So you still have some breathing room for Weibo if you want to give this one up. But that would mean that your timer is set for the next one. Shahu getting collapsed on by Leyen here. He's going to use the Weaver's Wall. And chance Crystal Arrow <laughs> goes a little bit wide, but he gets the damage off. So he'll stop Shahu in his tracks. Yeah, that was close. I mean, that would have ended up being a kill. Still, it's going to allow IG to be able to keep up their push. So Shoshana is just going to have so much pressure inside. So I love that IG are constantly looking for picks with this Ash. And they just got to keep rinsing and repeating uh, until they can, you know, pull way out of their base, whether it be for a Dragon Soul, or if we ever see them get confident enough to look for a Baron. I mean, they are actually running triple marksmen, so, <laughs> you know, it's something they can do quite fast. At one point, one day, we're going to have quintuple marksmen. I feel like, I don't know why, but I feel like it's happened. I feel like Probably. there must be a game where it's happened, where it's been like, I don't know, maybe Kindred or Graves, and then and then this. Quinn, top. I mean, you don't need five. This. Five's too much. No, five, five. I want five. I mean, it, it would just be bad, so it would just, it would just be <laughs> really <laughs> bad. Yeah. It's one of those Probably. things you think you want, but then when you get it, you just be like, oh, why did I want this? I find that happening a lot. Anyways, it's like two me with Little Caesars. <laughs> oh. Sometimes I think I want Little Caesars, and I'm like, ah, why do I want this? Come on. Nobody's going to understand what Little Caesars is anyways. But uh, YSKM goes into the engage position on the Weibo as he kind of face check. Ooh, nice little move from Shahu. Gets him away from the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. A, a really big Keeper's Verdict actually separated IG here. Weibo able to fight back just a tad. Like... Look, look at why uh -oh. scam is okay. We're, we're you know we're gonna pause. We're gonna we're gonna chill out. We're gonna find out what's up. But I just want to point out that last fight. Like, why scam is up front all by himself, getting hit by everything the enemy's throwing at him, and Weibo just don't have the damage uh, to do anything to this tank wreck side. Yeah, it's a uh, thorn mail sunfire start. So uh, yeah, no AD today. I'd be able to take down any of that health bar. It feels like and. This uh, is a little bit of a different style, but I know you were highlighting it for YSKM, practicing it coming into this one, but uh, very nice to see a little bit of stability gained when that was not the case against ZDZ in the first two games. No, and right, I feel like a lot of it this time around is, is, is having that lane matchup, having being on the winning side of the 1v1, and really no kill threat. Being there from either the Aatrox or the Rex, I think is working out well for him, so... I gotta say, Mizell, IG bringing us into uncharted territory of the potential game floor. Maybe that's why the pause happened. Maybe <laughs> Wayne goes uh, like, what's going on? We were not supposed to lose. Who's got the script? I think it was maybe the Keeper's Verdict just yeeted them off of Summoner's Rift, and now they gotta find a way to get back on. Could be. That, that's what I would go with. Because it was um, like right after the Keeper's Verdict. It was, you know, it was like a solid... <laughs> five or six seconds? Are you saying I just IG like need the five cinematic... or six seconds to figure out where they are? I just like the cinematic shot of, you know, somebody getting yeeted off of Summoner's Rift and not being able to get back on. That Weibo. almost happened to IG. I'm still just so so built in with how Weibo haven't really smiled at all this series. You know, right now it actually makes sense. It's a little bit suspicious, Bazel. Do you expect them to smile? This is I don't feel like this is the most smile heavy team. I think ZDZ and Light probably the most likely to smile. No way. Shahu for sure. On on this team? Sometimes. I'd say Shahu one hundred percent. 
I think the, the not least this likely, series. The not least series. likely is definitely Crisp. But I was going to say, kind of other than Crisp, I don't really think of this team as like a like a stone face sort of team. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently they are all business today. But hopefully we'll have an update on what's exactly going on. I'm sure there's just uh, some tech issues here. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting back into it now. You don't want a stop we to are. the action. And here we go. Look at that. You got to speak about it. I was hitting my button the whole time. Finally, it just goes down. Uh, speaking of going down, turret in the side lane goes over to ZDZ. Huge pickup of the big Raptor by Weibo Gaming. Is, oh, another huge pickup by Legan onto the Krugs. We're going to try and build some artificial tension. As maybe we actually don't need to build artificial tension because Weibo are trying to reclaim <laughs> this vision. Ooh, Spear Connect. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of meal plan Summoner's Rift has for cougars where they're feeding rocks to them. I, I, I've worked at a zoo, man. That's not, that's not the kind of things that we feed to these animals. Oh, but, but you know what we feed? feed? Meat. Chris? And uh, Ligan's looking for it here. He's going to go over the wall of the hostile takeover from Chris, trying to buy some time. ZDZ is here, but TP's plenty from IG. He's trying to take down On. Now maybe just try to find an exit. Chris will find an exit, but it is only to the gray screen. And Ligan claims that one. I mean, this should open up for IG to feel confident. Ooh, they're TPing famous. on to light in mid lane. So the cry will be there. Get a bit of a pincer maneuver. I'm surprised that IG weren't more confident trying to look to bait the Baron. I mean, they don't have an Enchanted Crystal Air to fall back on, but YS game has Flash. They do have ways of starting up fights. And here we go. Gonna start it up now. Xiaohao is still around. There is the potential for 50-50 unless IG want to pull the trigger on a fight. Already going down as the Baron. Xiaohao's not even there. YSKM going to rebuff them. And the Baron secured by Luyan. YSKM is in there. He's going to get in there with the void rush as well he's trying to heal up look he is untouchable look how much he heals and ig they get the baron they get out with all five purple capes yeah i mean seriously it really just does not feel like i wave or ever gonna have the damage to take down this rex eye is oh shall how oh they find the handshake they actually find lien that's a big amount of damage but you gotta watch on on is on the side he's already gotten one kill as well nice little explosive charge there with the combo the buster shot ig find another that's two for one and uh, at least now they have the siege potential on a tier two but they'll back off just having so much damage to work with themselves uh more kills, more gold picked up. Again, they've been on soul point now for a while. That Drake's going to come up in a minute and a half with this bear, and they're really going to be able to start just breaking down the rest of the uh, the Weibo side of the rift, especially when you have Tristana. Oh, yeah. Uh, they are giving Weibo a taste of their own medicine with the side lane pressure, too. We'll take a look back at that replay. Lien gets completely caught out, but the strengths of IG are many. It's one of those things where they're falling so far behind, they need to find any opportunity they can. And that's a great opportunity, right? Like, isolating the Nidalee. But you don't have anything beyond that. And IG, with the advantage with how far ahead they are, is... <laughs> I don't know why they're calling out on like that. He wanted he, the kill for himself. He, he deserves a bit of happiness and greed in his life. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the way the first two games went. Okay, you'll, you'll take that all day. Also, about a minute away from his soul for IG. Weibo, lacking in answers. I, I kind of feel like we're at a point in the game where, uh, again, I, I don't know really how their comp can come back in unless ZDZ finds some kind of insane flank where no flash on on, maybe the cooldowns from Kryon are down. You, you could try to insta-burst their carries, but there'd be too many what-ifs there. I mean, hell, Kryon even does have his flash. You're assuming he's holding on to his jump, and even his ult's coming back up soon, so... Yeah, yeah the trouble is, as well, Baron's still available, gonna be available before the fight even kicks off. Xiaohu, he wants to kick it off now. Krine's coming over the other side, though, and he's gonna rocket jump his way to victory. Big hostile takeover, oh. onto On, ZDZ can't get him, and On gets the kill anyways. Now it's the rocket jump city for IG, and they've been Goomba stomped into history. That's a full ace for IG, and we have a series on our hands. IG actually coming out with what's going to be the fastest game of the series so far with this performance against Weibo. 
They're going to try to finish it off here about 10, 15 seconds on the closest members, but they are barreling down this. They still have 10 seconds on the Baron buff, and they only have two towers standing in their way. They have woken up from the grave. They have staved off the darkness, and Lien's shining light on the Cougar comes clutch. IG push us to four. Again, I think IG are going to look at it the same way. They might be kicking themselves of, hey, why didn't we start this guy sooner? But... Again, I feel like Weibo really dropping the ball in terms of the draft they came in with this one, even just individual mistakes, but IG doing a great job. Their bot lane doing a lot better this time around. And then, I mean, the signature Nidalee, he's just going to come in, it's going to work, and they get themselves on the board. I am still happy that they've given both their junglers their comfort champions, right? You come out the gate with the Tienz and Rengar, but Loyen coming in very clutch. The tempo was the biggest difference, and the amount of times that Xiao Hao was forced into pressureful situations that was not the case in game one and two. We're going to see what happens for game number four after a short little break. Do not go 